it is a hedge. And I think you're seeing that right now. You know, maybe you could view it as a hedge in this kind of environment where, you know, still a big part of the globe is uh, under lockdown, staying at home more, uh, where, you know, they're not going out to restaurants, restaurants are closed, and there are therefore ordering more. And at the same time, because they're they're at home, they're, they're not going out as much. I think, you know, once we get past this pandemic back to somewhat of a, of a normal life, there will be a little bit more of a balance. Um, you know, there's questions about how sustainable some of the growth is in, in, in the food delivery business, and then how much of the of the ride share can come back, but will ultimately be at a balance between the two, and both should be strong in the long term. Yeah, but the question also arises on how much can they ramp up in the food delivery segment, uh, given competition that is already prevailing in that space. Uh, and as Dee pointed out, you know, Grubhub has already made quite an impact there. So can they rebalance their revenue portfolio? Yeah, that's a really important question. Um, look, it's the food delivery business globally is ultra competitive, especially today where the, the uh, there's a lot of new diners coming on and uh, Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and then you know, other competitors globally are all kind of vying to, to grab these this influx of, of new buyers. Uh, they're, they're, they're spending a lot of money, giving a lot of discounts to, to bring those buyers onto the platform. At the same time, restaurants, are seeing uh, challenges, so the, the food delivery companies are uh, cutting fees for restaurants and trying to you know help those uh, key constituents stay in business. So profitability is a big challenge. It's probably going to stay a challenge for for a little while. Uh, it, it's really not that clear yet if this can be a sustainable, profitable business. But uh, at, at least for now, on the top line in terms of diner growth and order growth, uh, we're seeing a tremendous uptick right now. Yeah, Eagle, I think that's the concern, though, right? I mean, an uptick is one thing, but until you can prove profitability, that's going to be a concern for shareholders, which is why we're seeing the reaction we are in after hours. So what needs to be done to convince these investors that the turnaround story will be intact on ride hailing? Because I think there's also some fear out there that people are changing their practices altogether, even as the COVID situation improves. Yeah, for, for ride hailing, really, it's just a matter of time and it's a time will tell kind of story. And I think that's part of why you, know, you haven't seen Uber or, or, or Lyft for that matter really kind of mm -hmm. uh, break out. Uh, you know, the pandemic has been uneven. The the recovery has been uneven globally. And, you know, in places like, like the US where you know, there's a reacceleration of cases, you're still seeing real pressure on, on demand. And, and that's true. We don't really know for sure exactly how things are, are going to be coming out, uh, out of it on, on the other end. People are going to be working from home more often. Uh, business travel might take a really long time to, to come back. You know, what, what Uber did say, though,